ladies and mostly gentlemen today we're going to talk about legendaries and more specifically crafting legendaries in shadowlands how easy is it going to be but before we get into that guys i just want to thank the sponsor of this video and that is my twitch channel twitch.tv slash mr gm if you want to see me streaming shadowlands every single day i'm over on twitch.tv slash mr gm right so legendaries have returned in shadowlands and they're going to be more important than ever and there's a pretty interesting system to craft them now i haven't seen many videos on this maybe i just don't watch enough youtube but there is like quite an intricate system to crafting these legendaries a lot of people just say, oh, it's Soul Lash, you gotta get your Soul Lash from Torghast, and yeah, that is true, but there's also a ton more to it than that. So in this video, we're gonna go over all the steps of creating a Legendary in Shadowlands, how easy is it gonna be, what do I need, what professions are gonna be the best, let's begin. So, first and foremost, you're gonna wanna unlock the Rune Cover. Now, the, now the Rune Cover is located in a special room of Torghast. This is open to everybody. You can see him hanging there. A really cool looking model and definitely a very interesting story that we're gonna probably unfold throughout Shadowlands. Now, to unlock him, it's fairly easy. When you go through your first Torghast run at level 60, you will obtain a quest item, and that is essentially a quest chain which will eventually unlock the Rune Cover. It's not really too intricate. It's not really too difficult. So, it is just something that you're probably going to unlock on day one of being level 60 in Shadowlands. As for materials you're going to need to create these legendaries, as I mentioned, one of them is Soul Ash. Soul Ash is a very integral part of creating a legendary, and this is something that you can acquire from normal Torghast. Now, Torghast is one of the pinnacle features of Shadowlands. If you want to know more about Torghast, I do have a full video on my channel, which I uploaded the other day. But yeah, so Soul Ash is something that you're going to get from Torghast, and essentially the TLDR of how you're going to get it is that Torghast is split into to layers and it's eight layers per wing and every week you want to do at least two wings of Torghast at layer eight to maximize the amount of soul ash. Now each layer does award soul lash and obviously the higher the layer the more soul lash you're going to require. Now the good thing here is that when you do the higher layer you're actually rewarded all of the soul lash from the previous layers so that's super handy so you don't have to run a ton of Torghast. They did just announce that the highest layer you can do at the launch of Shadowlands is layer three and then when the raid comes out it's going to be up to layer 6 and then when mythic comes out it's going to be up to layer 8. Now this doesn't change too much in regards to how quickly you can make a legendary. Realistically with this change you're going to be making your first legendary on the first day of the raid. Obviously you want to get that done before you jump into the raid for the very first time. So really we're looking around three weeks to get enough soul ash to build that first legendary because you're going to need 1250 soul ash to create that legendary and with the cap being layer 3 the max amount you can get per week is 610. Next up, you're going to need a base piece. Now, these are required through max level professions. Luckily, it's not some horrible quest or drop to get the recipes for these. You literally just get to your max on the profession and then speak to the rune carver and he will give you the recipes. And if you don't want to do professions, you can actually buy the base pieces on the auction house if you want to. But if you want to go in and actually create your own legendary, this is what you're going to need to have. If you want to create cloth items, you need tailoring. Leatherworking will create base items for leather and mail. Blacksmithing will create plate items and jewel crafters will create rings and necks. Now those are the base items that you're going to need for your legendary. They're not too hard to make and all of the other professions actually have quite a nice synergy with it so you're not going to be left in the dark if you do something like herbalism or alchemy because those will be needed to create some of the other stuff. For example, miners will help enchanters, blacksmiths and jewel crafters, herbalists will help alchemists and inscription, skinners will help leatherworking and enchanters, alchemists will help jewel crafters get some of their items, enchanters will probably be the most important one, they'll be helping leather workers and tailors create some of the items for their legendary. So as I said, there is a synergy between all of the professions there. If you want to be the guy to make probably the most gold there, you're going to probably be wanting tailoring, leatherworking, blacksmithing, or jewel crafting, and actually be the one creating those base pieces. And as I said, you can sell them on the auction house along with all of the materials used to create them. So you may have noticed I missed out a profession there, and that is engineering. Now, unfortunately, engineering is not very good in Shadowlands. It has some cool things, but none of it is relevant to creating legendaries, unfortunately. So if you don't want to make any money and you just want to have some fun and use some of the older engineering things, which is what engineering is pretty good for, then go with engineering. But if not, try another profession. Now, the other thing you're going to need is a missive. Now, these missives are created by Inscription, another profession that's going to be very important here. And essentially what this does is it's stats. This is where you're going to get these stats for your legendary. So naturally for this, you're going to be wanting to buy or create your two main stats. These missives do cover all of the stats. You can get one of haste, crit, 
versatility and mastery. So all of the bases are covered with these missives and that's just another key part. And you're gonna need two of these to create your legendary. So now you have your amount of soul lash, you have your base piece for the item that you wanna create and you have these stats through missives. Now, what are you missing? The powers, of course, the powers for the legendaries. Now these are inspired by old tier sets, old legion legendaries, and even some of the abilities from Torghast, which is actually really cool. Now it's important to note that you can only wear one of these legendaries at a time. Will this increase throughout Shadowlands? More than likely it did in Legion as well. And also these powers are specific to different pieces. So as an example, a certain power may only go on the helm piece and not the legs. Now these powers are learnt through recipes and this is where it gets a little bit controversial and people aren't too happy. So the legendary powers come in three different varieties. You have a general power, which is usable by any class and spec. You have a class specific power and then you have a spec specific power. And every class has around about 16 powers or so uh, per class and these recipes are obtained through various means and when I say various I mean literally everything in the game. So here's a list of where some powers could potentially come from. One is reputation now none of the class specific ones will come from reputation it will be general only. Uh, you've got pvp honor, you've got torghast, you've got the great vault which is the weekly chest, you've got venari rep which is from the moor, you've got the raid, you've got world bosses, and you've got dungeons. So literally any activity in Shadowlands will give you powers. Now, the problem here is that, you know, what if your best one is from a world boss? That world boss is not going to be up all the time. That's a really difficult situation. What if you don't raid and your best one is from raid? What if you absolutely despise PvP and your best one is from PvP? This is obviously an issue for some people and I understand that Blizzard kind of probably want people to just do everything in the game. I guess, but the world boss one doesn't make any sense to me. I can understand dungeons and Torghast and things like that. As for drop rates of the recipes, we did originally believe it was going to be 100%. Now, Wowhead have just come out with a brand new Ian interview, basically saying that's not the case. Now, he did say that it is the case for world boss drops, but for ones from dungeons and repeatable content, it's not going to be 100%. Now, we're unsure of what the actual drop rate is. I wouldn't imagine it being like 1% or something like that. Hopefully, it'll be quite a reasonable drop rate. I'm not too sure, and that's something we're going to find out once Shadlands launches and we start farming some of these legendary powers. And I believe the unlocks are actually account wide. So if you have like 14 warriors and you unlock one power on one warrior, I believe, don't quote me on this, that it is actually unlocked across all of your warriors. So that's basically what you're going to need for your legendary. So just to run through, it's Soul Lash, a base piece, two missives, and then your specific power. Now these powers are also stored on the dungeon journal. If you want to have a look at your potential powers and which ones you've unlocked, you can just open up the dungeon journal at level 60 and it shows you all of them there. Now it does actually tell you the source of all these powers, which is really great, but you can't click them and it looks like they should be clickable. You'd imagine you click it and it would show you the entire loot table for like the raid boss it drops from or something like that. So that's not something that's currently available. Maybe someone will make an add-on, that'll be a huge help. But yeah, if you do want to check where your specific legendary powers are from, it is just in the dungeon journal at level 60. But that's pretty much it. That is essentially how you make legendaries. Now on top of all of that, these legendaries do actually have ranks and these ranks are obviously linked to item level. So your rank one basic legendary is item level 190. Now to upgrade the ranks, it's not the end of the world. It's actually just another base piece at a different rank and some soul lash. So you don't have to get the missives. You don't need to get the powers again. All of that's already sorted. It's essentially just another rank piece from you know the auction house where you can create it and some Soul Lash. So rank two is item level 210, rank three is item level 225, and rank four is item level 235. And obviously the amount of Soul Lash to upgrade each time is increased. And that doesn't seem like too much of a bad system, honestly. So finally, the most important part for everybody is the appearances. Now these sets look absolutely amazing. I'm sure you've seen them a ton. I do have a video covering all of the appearances if you haven't seen them. But the saddest part of it all right now for the collectors is that the items do not add to the collection tab. Once you've collected them, you cannot transmog other items into them. You can wear them, but they don't add to the collection tab. In regards to whether or not this would be changed later on in the expansion, game director Ian Hazakostas has actually just come out and said that the actual legendaries you're creating won't become appearances later on down the line. He said there'll be another way to unlock the entire set later on in Shadowlands. So don't go and make the entire legendary set now, expecting to get the appearances later on down the line, because that's just not the case. 
So that's pretty much it. That's how you make legendaries. Guys, let me know down below what you think. I have some mixed feelings on the powers. I think everything else is fine. I like the fact that they're making professions relevant again. I'm curious to see how much these are actually going to go for on the auction house as well, especially in the early game of Shadowlands. I think it's going to be a massive arms race in regards to putting that stuff on the auction house for a certain price. But yeah, only time will tell. Shadowlands is launching real soon, guys. Let me know what you think of the system. And before I go, guys, I'd like to give a massive shout out to my amazing patrons, you YouTube channel members and Twitch subs, you guys are awesome. And if you'd like to support the channel in any of those ways, links are down below. So leave a like on this video, guys, if you'd like to and subscribe if you haven't. I've also got a partner Discord channel with over 3,000 members. And as I said, I am now streaming on twitch.tv slash MrGM. We've actually been doing some legendary testing recently, making some legendaries, doing some profession stuff. So if you want to check me out, streaming Shadowlands, I'm over on twitch.tv slash MrGM. And with that, guys, I'll see you next time.